the years, I felt increasingly disconnected from technology as centralized platforms dominated the consumer landscape. Walled gardens imposed strict control over how we interact with and experience the digital world. This centralized model doesn't sit right with me, and I believed that users should have freedom and ownership over the tools and software in their lives. When Valve first announced the Steam Deck in 2021, I was immediately drawn to its potential. Powered by a custom Arch Linux-based OS called SteamOS, it represented a bold old step towards an open alternative for PC gaming outside proprietary ecosystems. As both a handheld PC and Steam client, it promised to liberate games from platforms seeking dominance over software and compatibility. Valve's vision aligned with my beliefs in decentralization and putting the user in control. Their work on Proton, which brought thousands of Windows games to Linux, was a technical triumph, advancing the open cause. It was clear they saw PCs not as locked appliances, but tools for empowerment without limits imposed by others. When my deck arrived, I was blown away by its polish and performance and continue to be so. Being able to seamlessly switch between gaming and productivity anywhere without dual booting or VMs felt liberating. This reignited my passion for open platforms and inspired me to experiment further. I began using DistroBox to run different Linux distributions on the deck, allowing me to tinker freely. Learning new tools and troubleshooting became effortless through this process. As my Linux skills grew through continued deck use and DistroBox tinkering, I decided to pursue the LPIC1 certification to formalize my learning. Having a dedicated open platform to experiment with freely in my personal time has been invaluable. The deck proved the perfect portable study device. I could review material anywhere, inspiration struck, feeling truly liberated to learn at my own pace without the walls erected by others. Its power allowed me to run virtual machines, test concepts hands-on without a risk of breaking my own main system. Studying for the LPIC-1 using the deck was a revelation. Concepts I initially found daunting, like package management, kernel updates, and system architecture, became clear through real-world troubleshooting in my VMs. Being able to seamlessly switch between gaming and certification prep streamlined my workflow immensely. Valve's vision for the deck as an open, hackable PC inspired me to push my technical skills further. Their work advancing Proton and Steam OS emboldened my belief that users should control the tools in their lives. Preparing for the LPIC-1 on the deck felt like an act of empowerment, liberating myself through open platforms. I never imagined myself seriously studying Linux, yet here I was immersed in technical documentation thanks to a device proving open source's gaming potential. The deck reignited my passion for customizable, user-focused systems and motivated me to pursue new opportunities in the field. With the LPIC-1, I hope to land work administering or developing for Linux environments aligned with my beliefs in open computing. While I still support Windows professionally as many businesses remain dependent on it, I've always felt uneasy about Microsoft's practices. When I started in IT, working with their products was simply a means to an end. I knew open standards better aligned with my values long term. Over the years, the warning signs have only increased regarding their approach. Just last month, my manager sent around an article article about Microsoft forcing Bing integration into Windows searches via a new update. As someone with an interest in AI, I don't feel it is right to force a particular service onto users without choice or transparency. This latest move reinforced why open platforms will always be superior in my mind. On Linux, I retain control over what runs without disruption from any single entity prioritizing profits over user empowerment and privacy. Linux has long fascinated me as a student of technology, though opportunities to deep dive were limited. As my career progressed, I found myself using Microsoft tools more out of necessity than preference. Their approach began feeling at odds with my values of user empowerment and privacy. It was around this time that the Steam Deck was announced. I immediately saw its potential for exploration beyond just gaming. Here was a powerful open platform I could learn on freely without disrupting work responsibilities or relying on other systems. Getting hands-on with Steam OS reignited dormant passions. Configuring Arch-based distributions in DistroBox and tinkering under the hood gave me an appreciation 
for the death of Linux. Studying technical documentation became an engaging hobby rather than a chore thanks to an experience optimized for the task. Proton's performance impressed me with its dedication to user choice. Seeing how far it is advanced gaming on Linux renewed my belief in open alternatives. Valve's vision aligned with my philosophy that technology should augment users not constrain them. DEC accelerated my journey in a way no other device could. While I still support Windows professionally and certain games require it, having a dedicated Linux machine has been invaluable. It allows progressing skills privately at my own pace, unburdened by reliance on any single entity. I've begun transitioning personal workflows fully to Linux, weaning off proprietary software. With certifications and experience gained through dedication and exploration, I hope to one day administer or develop exclusively for environments empowering independent and critical things. The Steam Deck arrived at the perfect time to fuel my journey in open computing, and I look forward to the possibilities that will open as my skills continue to grow. Thanks, Valve.